Sutra. It is because he desires to exhaustively know the afflictions of the share of greed, the afflictions of the share of anger, the afflictions of the share of stupidity, and afflictions of the share of an equal share of all of these, and to cut off the root of all afflictions. Commentary. This explains why the Bodhisattva wants to bring forth the mind for Bodhi. The Bodhisattva wishes to teach and transform livings, but in order to do so, he has to understand living beings' root natures. Understanding living beings' root nature is understanding their desires, what living beings like, and so the text says, it is because he desires to exhaustively know the afflictions of the share of greed. The Bodhisattva wants to understand how much greed and desire each living being has if they have a lot of afflictions. However, if greed and desire are small, ten afflictions are few. There are those who have greed for fame and those who have greed for gain. Those who have greed for fame die by fire. Those who have greed for gain die by fire. Those who have greed for gain die by water. Fame harms people and so does gain, but people do not recognize this, so they give rise to greed for them. There are those who have greed for wealth, greed for sex, greed for food, and greed for sleep. Therefore, wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep are the five rules of the house. Going back and forth in greed, you don't know when you will fall into the house. In the world, there are two kinds of people those who have greed for fame and those who have greed for gain. As one who has left the home life, you might have greed to become a great monk. You may have greed to become a great drama master. And when one becomes old, when one has greed to be an older monk. There are those who are greed to be the most famous drama masters in the world. And there are those who are greedy to the most powerful Java masters, that is, with the most money. But they don't know that being greedy to be an elder Java master is not far from being greedy to be a dead Java master. They don't know that greedy people die from greed. Those who have greed for sex die in sex. Those who have greed for fame die in fame. Those who have greed for eating die in eating. Those who have greed for sleep die in sleep. The more one sleeps, the more confused one becomes. The more confused one gets, the more one wants to sleep, until it, this reaches the point that one dies in one's sleep. So, the people who fast want to cure their sickness of greed for eating. Whoever doesn't wish to solely seek fame should cure their disease of greed for fame. Whoever doesn't want to have a lot of sexual desire, ever doesn't want to have a lot of sexual desire, should break up his or her thoughts of sexual desire. People use thoughts of reverence to get rid of thoughts of sexual desire. You do not want to neglect the practice of reverence. Using reverence to cure desire is the work of the sage. The sage also has desire, but his desires, his desire is to use the reverence to cure desire. He doesn't move the, with thoughts of desire. He doesn't let his thoughts of desire run wild. So he is able to become a sage regarding wealth, money, and don't pay attention to whether it's true or false. If you see it as false, and yet you still want to keep it, that is permissible. And if it is true, isn't that even better? If you truly maintain the precept against holding money, that is cutting off one of the five rules to the house, which are wealth, sex, fame, eating, and sleeping, and then you won't run off into the house. Wealth, sex, fame, eating, and sleeping are the five rules of health. If you have a lot of money, when you die, you can't take a single penny with you. So even if you have greed for it, what use is it? 
Sex is the manifestation of ignorance. It is practiced by stupid people. So, what's so special about it? Fame is also false. So I always tell you, if someone asks me what my name is, I say I have many names. One is Aung Tzu. Another is the living dead person. Another is Tu Lun. Another is the monk in the grave, and another is Xuan Hua. All of these names are false names. None are true. Ultimately, one is my true name. My true name is Living Being. And another of my true names is Buddha. Why? Because living beings can become Buddhas. I have vowed that I will wait until all living beings have become Buddhas before I become a Buddha. Can you say this name is incorrect? So, I am also called Might because living beings and the Buddha do not go beyond a single thought of the Might. So, Might is also one of my true names. Might, Buddha, and living beings. These three have no difference. So, they are my true names. If someone asks you, who is your teacher? Say, my teacher is a living being. Who is your teacher? Buddha, our minds. With the exception of these three, all others are false names. Yet if you are attached to these, that is also a mistake. They are all false. So you want to get rid of the affliction of greed and desire, that is, the share of greed. The affliction of the share of anger. Hatred means having anger. Why is there hatred? It is because of greed. You hate whoever doesn't fulfill your wishes or whoever does not satisfy your greedy intentions. When you give rise to hatred, the, the other person wants to give rise to hatred. The other person wants to fight with you. Perhaps you will die or perhaps you will live. When country fights country, it is because of greed. If there were, wasn't... There wasn't and in greed, and there were two people who are angry with one another, then who would fight with who? No one would be fighting. Fighting between two countries comes about because of the fighting between the rules of those countries. You feel that the government officials of my country have done you wrong, and I feel that your country's officials have done me wrong. So there's mutual dissension and fighting. When there's mutual dissension and fighting, when there's a mutual greed for each other's gains, fighting arises. I may have greed for your country's gains, and you don't relinquish them to me. Or perhaps you wish to obtain the gain of my country, and I don't want to concede them to you. As a result, there is fighting. Countries go to war and the citizens who die are immeasurable and limitless in number. People die just because they wish to obtain a little advantage. This is the affliction of hatred. Next is the afflictions of the share of stupidity. Stupidity is being stupid and dumb. Stupidity is having no concern for anything and not having any knowledge of principles. One's mind is mixed up and confused, without any regard for uh, a regard of concern for anything at all. Therefore, one kills, starts fires, or steals. One would do anything. One does not consider whether it is right or wrong. One just goes and does it. This is the affliction of stupidity, and these are all stupid actions. And there is the afflictions of the share of an equal share of all of these, an equal proportion of greed, anger, and stupidity, and others. For example, there is already so much greed, so much hatred, and so much stupidity, yet you open them up and expand them so that they span to become one million or a hundred million afflictions, so many that they are innumerable. So the Bodhisattva wishes to know about all these kinds of afflictions and cut, to cut off the root of all afflictions. The Bodhisattva 
which is to cut off all the fundamental afflictions. What are the fundamental afflictions? They are greed, hatred, and stupidity. If one were to speak of them in great detail, one could not speak of them to the end, even exhausting the limits of the future. Because the flower of Dharma Sutra is so long, I am just speaking about them in general. But if you know just a little bit, then you can expand it and come to understand the many kinds of afflictions. However, you don't want to keep a lot of afflictions. You want to cut them off. The important point is right here. You don't keep them. You cut them off. Considering afflictions as being like eating vegetable dumplings that you like is a big mistake. This year, we are beginning a triple churn session. Our churn sessions are a little different than other people's. You are all wholeheartedly participating in this trans session. During the trans session, you don't want to strike up on false thinking. You want to take your false thinking and beat it to death. Then your wisdom will come forth. You want to turn back to wisdom will come forth. You want to turn back to the origin and return to the source and rediscover your fundamentally existent wisdom. Every person has wisdom, but he or she is unable to use it. If no one tells you how to use your wisdom, then you won't even know that you have this wisdom. It is just like gold within a gold mine. If you don't use the effort Kung Fu, then the gold cannot appear now within the mind of each one of us. There is true and actual wisdom. Just the same as there is gold within a gold mine, you find it, then you can use it. If you are able to use it, then your wisdom light will appear. So the advantage of a churn session is that you can rediscover our fundamentally existent wisdom. Right now, there are still people who are both fasting and participating in this churn session. This is something which has never happened before. I believe there has never been anything like this in the whole world. There have never been people who are so vigorous that they fast and attend a transaction at the same time. This is inconceivable. So everything we do at Goat Mountain Monastery is something which has never been in the whole world in the world before. These things do things like this in China. In China, the transactions are not transactions. They are vegetable dumpling session. They all want to eat vegetable dumplings. In the evening, each person gets two big dumplings. Each dumpling is so heavy, it weighs about. Why do they come to strike up a session? They want to strike at the vegetable dumplings. In the evening, in the Chen Hong, they have vegetable dumplings and also sea same oil. Now, we don't have vegetable dumplings or sea same oil, and we do not eat in the evening or in the morning either. If you can't take it, you can go steal a little food to eat. But publicly, no one eats. This is something which has never happened before in the world. I believe that when the Buddha was in the world, only earnest cultivators were like this. As to those who are fasting, this is called having patience with what one cannot be patient with. To be with, everyone certainly wants to eat, and those who are fasting are being patient with the desire for food. Further, we are patient with the greed for sex. It is said the desires for food and sex are natural. Eating and sexual desire come naturally. As soon as one is born, one understands these things. Sex is a man seeking a woman, of a, or woman seeking a man. This longing is not easy to endure. Going without food is not easy to endure, and not being involved with the opposite sex is not easy to endure. Yet here we are able to be patient with them. We are able to be patient with all of these problems. We are able to bear without what we can't bear. 
by not eating things until one is hungry, one is forging one's indestructible vara body. If during this second time you are able to fast for 36 days, then the third time you can fast for 72 days, and the fourth time you can do it for half of a year. And the fifth time you can fast for one year or two years without any problem. Then if there is a famine and there is nothing for people to eat, you can sit there in meditation and you won't die. You see, isn't it this wondrous? This is just forging away, being patient when one cannot be patient, yielding where one cannot yield, and taking what one cannot take. One may say a man needs a woman, yet I want to be patient with this situation. What does need mean? Don't debate with yourself saying a maid. It will certainly be unbearable, yet you want to bear what is unbearable. If you want to cultivate the way you have to get rid of these bad habits and faults, if you can get rid of these bad habits and faults, then you certainly will become awakened. You will certainly understand the mind and see the nature. So this year during our trans session, there should certainly be people who will open a great enlightenment. If no one opens a great enlightenment, that's too pathetic. So each person wants to take their false thinking and beat it to death. You don't want to have false thinking. You should reach the state where not even one thought is produced and the entire substance manifests. You don't want your six sense organs to move. Movement is just stillness. Stillness is movement. This is called stillness and movement having one entrance. Don't have false thinking. Then this transaction will not be wasted. Sutra, it is because he desires to completely know the afflictions of self, the afflictions of what belongs to self, the afflictions of the, uh, the arrogance of self, and to enlighten to all afflictions exhaustively without remainder. It is because he desires to completely know both the fundamental afflictions and the subsidiary afflictions which are produced from upside down discriminations. It is because he wishes to subdue all afflictions. There are the 62 kinds of views that arise from the view of a body. Commentary It is because he desires to completely know the afflictions of self. If people have a sense of self, then they have afflictions. If And if one does not have a self, then one has no afflictions. But most people cannot put down the self. And because they cannot put down the self, and because they cannot put down the self, all kinds of afflictions arise. The afflictions of what belongs to self. If you have a self, then you have what belongs to self. This belongs to me, that is mine that also belongs to me. These are all afflictions. The afflictions of the arrogance of self. Arrogance means being proud. One thinks that oneself has more ability than other people, so one gives rise to a kind of arrogance about one's ability. This leads to afflictions. The Bodhisattva wishes to understand this and to enlighten to all afflictions exhaustively without remainder. He is able to enlighten to all afflictions as being empty. They all are non-existent. If you have afflictions, then you have attachments and you will create karma. But if afflictions are empty, then karma will also be empty. All karma is created from afflictions. It is because he desires to completely know both the fundamental afflictions and subsidiary afflictions which are produced from upside down discriminations. All afflictions arise from greed, anger, and stupidity, also from selfishness and ignorance. These are the fundamental afflictions. Upside down discriminations produce these fundamental afflictions, which in turn give rise to subsidiary afflictions. Also, it is because he wishes to subdue all afflictions, there being 62 kinds of views that arise from the view of a body. 
greed, hatred, and stupidity further give rise to evil views. In general, evil views can be divided into five types, which are the view of a body, extreme views, views concerning precepts, views of views, and deviant views. From the view of a body, there arise the, the 62 kinds of improper views. These are simply baseless theories dreamed up by those of outside ways and uh, heterodox persuasions who have no understanding of what form is, yet cling to these views which are nonsense. The 62 categories of improper views involve four propositions with regard to the five skandhas form, feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. Apply to the first, the form skandha, the four propositions go. Form is great, I am small, I am within form. Form is small, I am great, form is within me. Form is me, I am apart from form. In order to arrive at 62, the same four propositions can also be applied to each of the remaining four skandhas. Feeling, thinking, activity, and consciousness. Giving 20 views, each of the 20 can be held in one of the three periods of time, past, present, and future, at, at the view of permanence and the view of annihilationism, and that makes 62 improper views. Outline of the 62 views. Each skanda is great. I am small. I am within. Each skanda. Two. Each skanda is small. I am great. Each skanda is within me. Three. Each skanda is me. Four. I am apart from each skanda. Four propositions multiplied by five skandhas multiplied by three per of time equals 60. Permanence 1, Annihilationism 1 over 62. These 62, 62 kinds of views arise because someone is looking for something to do when there is nothing to do, and because of discrimination, afflictions arise. All of the 62 views are afflictions. If you can subdue these 62 views, then you can subdue all afflictions. Do you understand? So you can't say that they are real. To think that the 62 views is a false consideration. These views arise from false considerations and they are not real. They are only names without any real meaning. With these names, there arise the 62 views and all kinds of afflictions. The Bodhisattva wishes to subdue all afflictions that arise from the 62 kinds of improper views. Therefore, he brings forth the body mind. You should subdue all afflictions in this way, but you don't want to think that there are really 62 views. How can one tell that you do not really exist? If you look in the Sutra, you will see the character Chu, which means to reckon. Yu, reckon, form, is me. I have form, form is me, I am in form, isn't this right? And so only through discriminations there arise the, the 62 views. The Buddha, in order to accord with people's considerations, spoke of the 62 views to break up their afflictions. He said, since you have 62 views, you have all kinds of afflictions.